Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio here with a sort of random problem that I'm going to solve. And I'm going to show you how I did it, doing it, <laughs> in the process of. Um, as many of you know, I have talked about and shown how I sell um, little Coptic books in my Etsy store. Uh, let's see, here's one right here that... For some reason I have it up there that maybe I can't sell it. There's some imperfection that I didn't think people would want to deal with, so I didn't sell it. So I set it on my desk. But basically, that's what this was, is, is a little Coptic book that had five signatures in it. So I'm going to show you what I, I got back. A customer bought it, and then she worked on it, and she sent me um, a message through Etsy saying that it had come undone. Well, let me show you why. <laughs> now, I've already pulled the stitching out because I didn't think I was going to do a video on this, but I think it's really important to learn how to fix it, fix something. And this will be my experiment on trying to fix things that people have... Uh, hate. The word abused is harsh. Uh, we're a little over-exuberant filling. So this was a very small little book that was thin. <laughs> but when I got it, it was this fat, all sewn down, and it opened up like this. When I, I might insert, some, I think I took some pictures of it, and I'm, I'll insert them at the end so you understand what I'm working with. So I wrote her and said, yes, I, I will take the book back, you mail it to me, and I will fix the book. Well, I got it, and yesterday I worked on sewing it with a thicker Coptic thread than I, or Coptic, thicker thread using the Coptic stitch. And I just could not get it to work. I sewed it twice, ripped it out twice. So I sent her a message and said, look, um, I can't make it work with the Coptic stitch because the pages are so loaded down and so fat that the Coptic is not going to work. So she, I told her I would make it into a regular book. So this is what I did. I took the stitching out and I rubber band her stuff together because I didn't want to make, I didn't want to sew anything upside down. I want to make sure it's cool. I told her I would use the three hole pamphlet stitch, which there are three holes poked in it that I use for the Coptic. Three hole pamphlet stitch will work just fine on this so I don't have to poke any extra holes and I don't want to mess up her work. So these are the covers. Now I, I'm not really crazy about having to redo the book, but this is how I'm going to do it. I was poking, I was making, where are they? Um, buttons from watching Natasha's last video from Treasure Books. And part of it was poking holes in the paper buttons. And I used my Big Bite with it. But what it does is it spits out, and I, I, I think of these as like little pellets, except for that's the head of a pin. Um, very small little things like this. So what I did was I took some of these little pellets out of my trash that I just happened to have when this happened. And I looked for ones that had maybe blue or a light color on top. Then I pounded them into the holes in the book where the Coptic was. It's pretty flush but the stuff so what after I put them in there some of the stuff was sticking up so I just took an emery board and I want to rough up that plug of paper this side is not the problem it's the you know the side of the book here so I put the plugs in they're basically paper plugs not bad that one the top fell off no biggie because this is going to be covered up but I didn't want to have to start and recut all the boards because there goes my profit, you know? I mean, these were already inexpensive. I think it sold for $12, and I, got, and I gave free shipping. So I, I'm doing this gratis. She doesn't know that yet, but I'm doing this gratis so I can teach myself how to fix something that somebody... I hate to say messed up. That just seems so harsh. But anyway, it was, there was too much stuff in the book. So what I said was, I will make this into a three-piece binding. And I ran off the paper that I covered the book with this morning while I was waiting for her answer. Thankfully, she said, yes, I'm fine with what you're going to do. 
So in order for the book to have what it needs to spread out, I cut another piece of chipboard that was the same as these. And then I know that when I space these out, the book will open properly. And the last signature in this, she has not finished filling up yet. So I want to be sure that this, what I've done here will accommodate whatever stuff she puts in the fifth signature. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to cover it, I'm going to cover this. Uh, let's see. Put some glue on here. I think I'm going to use PVA, not glitter. Oh, there's no pin in my PVA. I bet you have anything. Oh, it's not dried out. I'm shocked. Ah. Well, that was a surprise. Okay, so, oh, almost got that on my shirt. No! I have a shirt with no paint on it. <laughs> we don't want to mess that up. All right, so I'm going to put that right there, and it's kind of straight. Make sure there's no glue bubbles in here. And I have enough at the bottom. Let me just... It is straight. It's just that I peeled some of the paper off. I know it looks like it's not straight. All right, let me see if it is. Yes, it is. Okay. And then I'm going to draw a pencil line across here. And then around it to make sure I have enough to cover it. See, it's there's <laughs> there's board there, I swear. <laughs> Cut this. And then we will get this and cut the corners off like I do every single time. I told her I would have it in the mail today, but that's only because I thought that I could just re-sew it. And then when I fooled around with it last night, it was looking like it wasn't going in the mail today. And then I got up this morning at oh dark 30 and started fooling with it again. I'm like, uh, no, <laughs> don't think it's gonna make it in the mail today. Just fold these. And that's glitter. Let's use this. Put this at the bottom. Fold. I need a bold folder. Make sure that is nice and secure. And then I'm going to go ahead and tuck the ends in while I'm on the end over here. I usually wait till afterwards, but I'm not doing that this time. More glue. Me, 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 me. Probably had way too much glue, but I rather have way too much than not enough because I don't want anything to come undone. Okay, now we'll do the corner in. Tuck it in a little bit. There we go. All right, so let's glue this. And yes, it's really long, but I think it's going to serve me well in the end. Oh, the dog wants in and I don't want him in here. It looks like an envelope. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I had a, we went out today and I had a, a Vente Mocha Frappuccino with an extra shot. So I might be a little giddy. <laughs> I'm really upset with my coffee machine this morning. I had one cup of coffee this morning, and then the silly thing said, oh, I need to be cleaned. I'm like, no, 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 I need my coffee. Uh, no. All right, so I'm going to set this aside and let it dry. Then I'm going to take these, and I need to cut a piece that is the same width and height as this, and... Well, I could, let me think about this a second. I could, 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 could. I'm gonna have to cover part of this up. 
so that I have the space I need for the book to open and close. That's why you leave a little gap between the spine and this. So the kind of book I was thinking about doing is taking a piece of cereal box or something and covering it and then sewing each one of these signatures to that cereal box part and then gluing it right on top of this so that she's not going to see the three hole pamphlet stitch on the outside of the book, which I think is a much neater look. Although I do like the Coptic, but this is just too full for a Coptic. The, that little book was not meant to hold as much precious stuff as it's got now, so. All right, so I think that's what I might do. I need to get a spacer. I'll be right back. Okay, change of plans. <laughs> Did you, you know what to expect? All right, so I realized that in order to put a hinge on this so it moves, I'm going to have to end up covering up this. Um, so I need to cut some of this. Uh, this is Tyvek from an old envelope I got. And it's great because, where's the ruler? It's great because it lasts a long time. So I'm going to cut some of it off, like probably way more than what I need. And I'll put the rest in the basket. Let's try to get it straight, Vicki. Um, and I'm going to put a hinge on it right. You know, I'm going to overlap it where those holes are I plugged so it won't be so bad, right? So I'm going to put that there. Maybe I should have made it longer. Yes, I should have. Oh. Let's just cut the hinge the same height at the book. Try to avoid extra problemos. I think that's two and a half inches if I'm correct. Two and one half inches, almost. All right, let me get the cutter. And then, so it's two and a half inches in height. That's a straight edge, so we'll do two and a half inches for the height. And if it's off a little bit, I will trim it. So let's see. Well, that's not exactly lovely. Um, this way. Let's see, is it too high? Too tall? Just enough. Yeah, okay. So I want to make sure that I glue it here so it's overlapping. I don't need to glue it over the rest of the cover. I'm going to end up having to recover this. I do really did not want to do that, but thankfully I scanned my stuff and it is um, on the computer, so all I have to do is run a sheet off if I need more. All right, to cut that even. This is the one that's not so straight. It's not so lovely on the ends. There, that's much nicer. Maybe a little shorter, but it'll be all right in the end. And then I'm going to take this and see how much I need. I think that's a quarter of an inch is what I did. Yes, it's a quarter of an inch in, and then I'll need a half inch so that it'll overlap in the middle section. So, oh yeah, and we have to make room for a space, and I brought the spacer. So let's put this in here, line it up, and then I'm gonna pull the spacer out. I'm going to see how much I actually need. So I need a quarter of an inch and then a little bit past that. So I probably will do half an inch here and then split it. Probably, well, let's see. This is silly. <laughs> this is just plumb silly. Here's the Tyvek. Put it here. I think this is the back. 
I'll overlap it here. Put in my spacer. Now, I don't want that much space. I just need enough that the book will open because she's going to have plenty of space in the middle because I made the... Um, I made this enough, so I need to put some glue on here. I think this is an inch and a quarter wide. So I'm going to glue this on here. And then I'm going to have to recover the whole book when this is over because I just can't figure out any other way to do it. All right. So let's take this, and I want to make sure that I get enough overlap. There we go. Then I'm going to put the spacer in. And I'm going to glue this in, but I'm going to glue it this way. Oops, I think I should have glued, I should have glued it the other way. Oh well. Phooey. <laughs> Oh, I did do it right way. Oh, jeez. Okay, so there's the spacer. Here is the um, middle section. Uh, 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 don't you move. Do not worm out of there, bugger. Run. I'll just give you a little squiggly room there. And then I'm going to take this. And I'm going to cut an inch off of here on the end. Because I think that'll be enough overlap. If not, we're in deep trouble. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to put the spacer in. I'm going to put glue on the book. Bye bye, cute cover. Put the spacer in, line it up with the top and the bottom. Whoops. Okay. I just want to make sure they line up at the top and the bottom so there's some. Oh, that moved. Okay. So that when the book opens, it'll be even. And I think this cover was not cut quite as straight as it's supposed to be. So that means there'll be a bigger gap at the bottom with this. And then we need a little more room at the top here. All right, will it sit properly? Okay. All right, so we have the Tyvek here. pretty stuff here. Eh. Okay, we need to trim the edge off of this so it's nice and straight. And I'm going to do an inch because I med uh, measured on the grid here. And then I need another piece that's exactly the same because of the other side. This does not have to be an exact measurement. But at least needs to be straight if I'm going to do this. Let me see, put it here. And then this needs to wait. This needs to line up with the one inch mark. And then this is the top. I'll put that right on the, the grid line. And then line up the ruler. This is all going to be covered up with paper. 
but I want to make sure that this thing opens and closes because she still has more stuff to put in it. And the only way I'm going to get that to work is if I make sure that it's right and it has enough room for her to do what she needs to do to make the book finished. All right, so that's over the holes. Now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna work it into, I need something skinnier, work it in here so that it doesn't pull when it opens and see, it's not enough room, opens and closes. I think maybe I should have spread them out further. Will it close? Yes, okay. I get that in there. And I'll put more glue on this side so that I can cover up where I plug the holes. And leave this a little looser than here, let me make sure I got it down in there. There we go. So that it'll open and close. Now we're gonna do this side. Put a little bit of glue here, down into the gully, and then up along where this stuff is here. I'll lay this on here. I'm going to take this because it's skinny enough. It will go down in there. Then I'm going to let I'm going to mash on this side. So that should give her enough room for the book. There. So now it won't be having a lot of alligator mouth. I have a feeling she'll still overstuff it, but I'm doing my best to keep that from happening. <laughs> it's just so hard. <laughs> okay, we need to wait for this to dry a little bit before I do much of anything else. Okay, so I can do this signature business one of two ways. I've been thinking about this, and I think I can take a piece of generic chipboard, sew these on, cover the generic chipboard, cover cover it, and then take these and sew them onto it, and then glue that on here, and then she will not see the three-hole pamphlet stitch down this way. This will be all covered up with paper so she won't see any of that, and then the book will still be able to open. Or, I could sew these three hole pamphlet stitch into this chipboard, which I don't relish the idea. Um, and then she will have, after it's all completely covered, she will have the um, lines from five of these. And then I will have to recover another piece of chipboard and cover it, glue it on top of the, well, like this one, glue it on top of what was there. I glued another piece of chipboard onto this one. See, the covers are the same, but the end piece, I didn't have enough of the paper, so I had to find something else to cover the end piece. I did not want the, um, there's nine signatures in here, and I did not want the nine strings to show, so after I sewed it in on the regular cover, I wrapped another piece of chipboard and then glued that directly right on top of the um, three-hole pamphlet stitch I had done because I started out with five signatures in here and added four more. So I, I needed to cover that up so you can't see it. And that's what I was thinking about doing to this little bitty thing. I'm not sure which is the right way to do it. Um, I don't know. I do not know what's the best way to handle this. I think some of her papers are going to stick out a little bit, but I cannot fix that. Because she has like little fuzzy things sticking out on the ends, paper clips with um, sorry ribbon. I think I don't really want to sew through this, so I'm not going to. <laughs> All right, so now I need to find some 
cereal box that I can use as the base to sew these on and then glue that on here. Um, but first, I'm going to do that. I need to recover this whole thing. So let's do that right now and get it over with. Let's do this here, this there, uh, pencil. Right above and down the side. Now this is just computer paper that I um, I scanned my prints after I painted all these dots in with watercolor. This were this was some kind of a cardboard roll. I dipped it in black paint. Oh no, actually I used a uh, black stays on ink, you know, ink pad. Stamped it on here, then watercolored in every one of those little holes. And then when I got done, I photocopied this so that I would not have to do this again. <laughs> Thank goodness, I thought that far ahead. All right, so what do we have here? We have this, and I'm gonna have to glue this whole thing on here. I think this is going to go in the mail today. <laughs> I think it's going to be too wet. So I have to wait for all whoops, I have to wait for all of this stuff to dry. And then I still have to put more paper on the inside which I did not photocopy. So, I've got to figure out what to do about the inside cover. This here. This this And make sure we have folding room so it'll look nice on the ends. All right. So now we're going to go through this whole process again. <laughs> Let's line it up. Where's the fold? Here's the fold. There's the fold. Let's make sure we get it right. Cut. The reason you cut this paper off on the corners is because it puts un unneeded excess bulk when you fold stuff over. Okay, now I need to glue all this. Ha! Huh. Ye old Panera credit card. <laughs> wetness left. I'm going to scrape this. I don't want those lines showing everywhere. I think I might have to use more glue. Yep. Okay, so we're going to need another bottle of glue. This is this little teeny thing is not going to cut it, and I can't get this back in here. All right, let me get some glue. That truly was wishful thinking on my part. I didn't have to put that much effort into it. <laughs> Darn it. Well, you know... Some days it just goes like that. Oh, now don't tell me you're going to plug up too. <laughs> okay, now we need a toothpick. <laughs> oh. I did have my desk cleaned off. Truly. I made a concerted effort to clean my desk off. And I'm right back where I started. 
10,000 things piled up on here. Okay. Wait. Okay. Now, oh. <laughs> Jeez, come on. Really? <laughs> oh, goodness. You know, I think the reason why it's like that is because, oh, we have the ceiling fans going, like full tilt. And I think that when the glue comes out, I don't spread it fast enough to keep it from drying out from the effect of the ceiling fan. Oh, look. <laughs> okay, I'm done. I'm so over this. Ugh. There. <laughs> Just can't take it anymore. <laughs> if I have excess, I have excess. Wow, that's a lot of glue. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll unscrew this. And we'll take our finger and make it an even bigger mess than what we started with. <laughs> Holy moly. You know, this was to be nice to someone, but I think maybe the word no. <laughs> Ugh. I think this is going to be too much. All right. Let us spread. <laughs> Good grief. This is messy. I hope I have enough. Now I put all this stuff back in the little one. Quick, Vicky, glue it now. <laughs> do it, do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Holy crow. This is a mess. All right, let's get some of this glue off her hands. I don't want to leave marks on her book. I really don't want to do this more than once. All right, now I'm going to take it on this side, flip my card over, and smooth it out. And I want to make sure that we can fold the book over. Right there we go. Do I crack it? Oh, thank goodness, no. All right. So I think while this is drying, I'm gonna put this over here, and I'm gonna leave it so it's folded up, sort of folded up, sort of folded up, and I'm gonna go ahead and get that piece of um, chipboard cereal box, whatever, and um, cover it and then sew these in. I think that's the next step. <laughs> 